boy, today we have a good one. Today, finally, you guys have been asking for it for a long time, my full review of the Nike Wild Horse 7. This is gonna be an interesting one. Let's go. Yeah, I told him I'ma hit it out of stance. I deserve another hundred bands. I deserve another hundred fans. Told him this was always in the plans. I just did it cause they said I can't. Blowing euros when I'm down in France. Labels asking how I build a brand. Told him put a check up in my hands. Who I got time, no cap. Made a few checks, but they all in the rest. Had a few friends, but they suck in the past. I don't even trip when I'm thinking about that. Hopped in the whip and we all in black. Shawty wanna ride to the hop in the back. Zero to 100, seen a rap on the dash. Then kitchen up. Alright, everyone. Well, thank you so much for stopping by today. Uh, this shoe is one that I have put a lot of miles in. I'm at about 150 right now, and uh, that includes 100 and about six miles of the Cruel Jewel 100 down in Georgia, some really tough mountains down there, 33,000 feet of elevation gain and descent, long, long race. I have some very specific opinions about it and where the shoe will be best in your rotation if you decide to pick it up. And I did pay for the shoe with my own money. This video is not sponsored by anybody, so there you go. So we're gonna ask a couple questions and hopefully answer them during this review. First of all, what's the purpose of this shoe? What's it best for? And why would you think about getting it now? And as always, in all of my shoe reviews, we talk about four things. We talk about the fit, the ride, the performance, the appeal, and then I let you in on what's the deal. But first, let's talk about some specs of this shoe just real quick, get them out of the way. In the heel, we have a 22.5 millimeter stack height, and in the forefoot, we have a 14.5 millimeter stack height, giving you a drop of eight millimeters. And the weight of this shoe really surprised me. And my size 11 and a half is 13.04 ounces. That kind of blew me away because it really doesn't feel like that heavy of a shoe when it's on your foot. And a lot of it has to do with the fit, which I'll talk about in a little bit. It's not a light shoe by any means. And so there's some specific uses that you'd want to use this in and some specific times that you would not want to use this shoe. The shoe's definitely a trail runner. Uh, the outsole is pretty burly. It's meant for more technical, drier conditions. And it kind of fits in Nike's trail running lineup. It's like inching a little bit closer towards that kind of like max cushion, but definitely not uh, max compared to like Ultra Olympus or even some like Hoka's. But first up, let's talk about the fit of this shoe. And I really have only good things to say about the fit of this shoe. A size 11.5 fit just fine for me. Uh, but the comfort, when I put this shoe on, it's out of this world. And I have, like, I'm being totally honest with you. There's a lot of reasons why you might not pick this shoe, and we'll go over those. But the comfort is one where you're gonna put it on and you're gonna just, you're gonna pause for a second. And you're just gonna go, whoa. Like, this feels amazing. And that has to do with the upper. There's so much going on with the upper, and we're getting close to too much. We've got some rubber overlays across the front. We've got an engineered mesh mixed with just a ton of overlays, a ton of padding around the heel collar. The lacing system is fantastic. On the sides of the shoes, you basically have two layers of fabric and they loop around the laces. You've got this last eyelet that's a red, uh, almost like an extra lace, and that does connect down to the bottom on each side. And it just really, it really pulls the shoe very secure around your foot. Like I said on my, uh, Trail Pegasus review, the tongue is amazing with this big kind of like pillow padding right here. It just goes, like the laces go right across the top of your foot and you don't even feel them. It feels like something from like Back to the Future. Like you're lacing up and it's just like shoop, and like <laughs> you feel good to go. You can tie these laces tight, you can keep them loose. There's a good fit all the way around. The heel felt very secure. There's some padding that goes all the way around that kind of locks your heel down in there. Uh, you've got a pull tab on the back that makes it easy to go on and off. And then you have what I guess is sort of a controversial topic uh, with these shoes specifically, but you have this uh, kind of like half gaiter. It's definitely not a replacement for a real gaiter. And there's a lot of people that hate this, but I actually like it. And it like, maybe it just has to do with the way it fits on your foot specifically. But when I tie these shoes and when I get them to the tightness that I want, this gaiter actually really does kind of like lay across my ankle in a way where it does keep a lot of the debris and rocks out. During the Cruel Jewel 100, I opted to not wear a real gaiter and I just relied on this and I really didn't have any problems. So for me, I actually really liked this and I thought that it did a really good job keeping a lot of the dust and dirt out. And one important thing that 
I really seek out in trail running shoes is a secure feel. Like when I put this shoe on, I want it to feel like an extension of my foot and I don't want it to feel like it's flabbing around, like there's a whole lot of extra stuff going on down there. I don't want to be worrying about where I'm putting my foot. Like I want to run naturally. This shoe really, really succeeds in that. Like when you put it on, you just feel secure. Like you just feel like this outsole is part of your foot. You feel like the upper is part of your foot. Nothing was moving unnaturally. Everything moved with the flex of my foot. Everything went exactly where I wanted it to go. That's the standout feature of this shoe. All right, next up, let's talk about the ride. In the midsole, we have a full length Nike React foam. And like I said in my Trail Pegasus review just last week, the Nike React foam is one of my favorites. The energy transfer from your foot to the ground and back to your foot to spring up, really nice toe off. One thing that I do wanna talk about as far as the ride goes is this heel. And this is another thing that some people have reached out to me about and said that they've had some issues with. So I do wanna bring it up even though it wasn't an issue for me. But this heel is rounded. It might promote maybe some side to side. In me, I did not have that experience until Honestly, I'll tell you the truth here, honestly until the last two miles of the Cruel Jewel 100 where I felt like my heel was getting a little wobbly. But I actually do wanna let you know that my experience with this heel was very positive and I actually really liked how it was rounded because I felt like when I was going downhill descending these really steep mountains down in Georgia with technical terrain, rocks and roots, I was able to get a much better uh, kind of like ground feel. In my experience, the Nike Wild Horse allowed me to run downhill a lot more naturally and I felt a lot more secure in this shoe. I felt like my heel was able to dig into the ground a little bit better and I was able to go through an actual foot strike and my gait felt a lot better going downhill. All right, so this is where we're gonna talk about some of the more negative things about this shoe. And first up, the outsole. Uh, in dry conditions, it's absolutely fantastic. The grip of this rubber, the outsole, the lugs, everything works really, really well. Technical terrain, really great. I really love the shape of the outsole of the shoe. Kind of talked about the heel a few times. Performance of the heel was great for me. Where this shoe does start to lack in its performance is when it starts to rain, when it gets slippery, when it's muddy. This shoe does leave a little bit to be desired because the rubber, the compound that they're using is not that great when it gets wet. So I'd recommend that you check the weather if it's gonna rain. You know, you might need to take a little bit extra care, especially when you're going over rocks, roots, things like that. Nike says that there is a segmented rock plate through here, and I would love to see some pictures of it, but I wasn't able to find any online. Didn't have any issues running over rocks and roots. And the upper also performs not so great in rainy conditions. One of my first runs in this shoe was like a 20 miler where it was, it started raining halfway through and it poured for like an hour or two. And this shoe, the way this overlay is designed on the front, it actually kind of created a swimming pool inside my shoe. <laughs> so, and that was not cool at all. Like it was like, I could feel that my forefoot was submerged in water. This rubber overlay goes halfway back on the shoe on each side, pretty much. And that leaves very little area around the midsole of the shoe for water to escape. It kind of has to come out the top or a little bit here on each side. So that was a really tough run because these shoes got super heavy and my feet got really soggy. So what's the best distance terrain for this type of shoe? This is meant for more technical terrain where you're gonna be going a little bit slower. The weight of this shoe kind of rules out a lot of like faster races or faster runs, technical stuff, long days in the mountains, this shoe is gonna shine. Again, like I did the Cruel Jewel 100, 39 hours out in the mountains down in Georgia. So I don't know if many people pick this shoe for 100 milers, but for me, if I was doing another mountain race, I would definitely consider this at the top of the list. And last up, let's talk about the appeal of this shoe, the looks, does it make you wanna run when it's sitting on the shelf? And for me, I'm kind of undecided on it. Like there is a lot about this shoe that I really love, but there's also a lot where I'm kind of just like, Huh, I would have gone with a little, little bit more of like a neon yellow. The, this is like getting really close to mustard yellow. I think Nike has some really cool things going on with the design of the where the midsole and the sidewalls meet. I think that's great. Uh, you got the cool like Nike Trail logo back here. But all that aside, when it's sitting on the shelf, I'm looking at it, it does make me wanna go run, makes me wanna go climb some mountain. So I'll give it a thumbs up. And last up, what's the deal on the Nike Wild Horse 7? Should you get it? 
and why would you get it right now? So for me, this shoe is definitely in the category of more technical mountain running, lots of steep up and downhill. So if you're someone that uh, is training for a race like that, or you have a lot of that type of terrain around you, definitely consider this shoe. And the price, $130. I would say that this is definitely worth it. Uh, with one exception, if you are someone who only has the funds for one pair of trail running shoes at a time, which is a lot of us, uh, I would look somewhere else. The Wild Horse 7 is not going to check all of the boxes. But if you're someone that uh, can afford to have multiple pair of trail running shoes and you want something for more drier conditions, technical terrain, mountain running, this is definitely a winner. I would like to see Nike fix the drainage issues and I would like to see them just make their outsole a little bit better in wet conditions. If they could do that, this shoe would become eligible for a lot more runs and races. Uh, but until they do that, this is more of a specialty shoe. But maybe that's the point. Thank you guys so much uh, for being patient on my full review of the Nike Wild Horse 7, letting me run a full 100 miler in it and putting some time in between that race and this review so that I could really give you my honest opinions and just really being able to take a look at the shoe for what it is and what it's meant for. But I hope this review helped. If it did, leave a comment down below and stick around because I've got a lot more coming. So that's it for this one. I'll see you again soon. Bye. Yeah, told him I'ma hit it out of stands. I deserve another hundred bands. I deserve another hundred fans. Told them this was always in the plans. I just did it cause they said I can't. Blowing euros when I'm down in France. Labels asking how I build a